Hello, this is Denny, and this is my plant-based journey. And today, we're going to make pizza. Yes, I said pizza. We're going to be using a recipe from the Plant Pure Nation cookbook. And uh, in this recipe, uh, we're going to be using some whole wheat flour, and we're going to uh, make several pie crusts so that we're able to to make several different pizzas for you. Uh, I'm going to be using also the one that's on the Plant Pure Nation website uh, just because it has a couple of different ingredients. Uh, they're basically the same recipe but one of them uses agave nectar and one of them uses maple syrup and I'm going to be using the maple syrup. So I'm going to be using this uh, recipe. I think it looks good. I've seen the uh, pizza that they made on their website on their uh, YouTube channel and so I thought I would give this recipe a great try so that's what we're going to do today we're going to start by making sure we have all the ingredients we're going to make sure we understand the recipe and we're going to begin to assemble our ingredients all right before I begin I wanted to go ahead and go over the ingredients with you it includes warm water maple syrup active dry yeast it calls for energy egg replacer um, I couldn't find that in the area in which I live and so instead I'm going to be using uh, the vegan egg and so I'll use that as the replacer. There's other things you can use. Uh, there's lots of different ways in which you could do, use uh, chia seeds and water, things along those lines. But I'm gonna go ahead and use the vegan egg. It calls for sea salt, but you could leave that out just as easily. And it calls for three cups of, of white whole wheat flour or just the regular whole wheat flour. I have both, but I'm going to use the white whole wheat flour. And then uh, when we're finished, I'm going to make four different types of pizza and I'll show you those when we get to it. So let me get started. It starts by having the yeast dissolve in the warm water and the maple syrup uh, and it will come to a frothy state and I'll start with that and then uh, we'll go from there. All right, so let's get to it. All right, I'm going to start with one and a half tablespoons of maple syrup and I'm using the Maple Grove Farms 100% pure maple syrup. So one and a half tablespoons in each of my two batches. Next is one and a half cups of warm water. Next we're going to add one tablespoon of dry active yeast. Okay, I'm going to stir this in together just to make sure that all the yeast is able to get wet and to come in contact with the sugars that are in the maple syrup. Okay, the recipe calls for letting this sit until it gets frothy. And while that's working, I'm going to begin to put the other ingredients together. Okay, I'm gonna start with the egg replacer and I'm using the vegan egg. And um, the recipe that's on the back basically calls for uh, two level tablespoons with a half a cup of cold water and whisk together to equal one egg. So I'm gonna to try to make a mixture that uh, will accommodate the recipe and the ingredient listing that's here on the box. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use two tablespoons of the egg replacer and I'm going to add a tablespoon of water and we'll see how it goes. After adding the water I think that I needed extra so I put in four tablespoons of water with the two tablespoons of the vegan egg and it's starting to look better. The amazing thing is, this smells like egg yolks. It really does. I don't know what it tastes like, but it does smell like eggs. But uh, this looks like a good consistency, though, so this is what we're gonna use. We'll give it a try. Okay, next I'm going to add my white whole wheat flour, and I'm gonna add three cups into my large mixing bowls, and then it'll be time to add the ingredients together and begin to blend them. All right, the recipe calls for a one teaspoon of sea salt. And, and again, you can leave this out if you would prefer, but I'm gonna go ahead and add it to our meal. Okay, I'm gonna add the liquid ingredients to the dry ingredients, and I'm going to begin to knead it. And I'm gonna knead it until it's a, a good ball and uh, it's got the right texture. And then I'm gonna let it set aside and it will um, rise. It'll take about an hour. Then I'll push it back down and allow it to rise again for about 30 minutes, and then we'll have pizza dough. So here we go. Okay, one thing before I begin to knead this dough, 
wash your hands. We don't need all of your dirtiness in our food. Wash your hands. Real simple. Let's knead our dough. Okay, I have both of my bowls ready to go. I've kneaded the dough. I did have to add a little bit of flour to both of them as they were pretty sticky. And I covered them with a damp cloth. I turned my oven on to warm just to elevate the temperature in the room a little bit, um, but without making it too hot so that they begin to rise easier. And uh, this is gonna set for about an hour. Now, while that's going on, I'm gonna cut up my vegetables. Bell peppers and onions and mushroom, get my spinach ready, make my sauces, have all those things ready so that we can begin to put the pizza together whenever the dough is ready. All right, let's get to that. So I'm starting with my red onion and I cut thin slivers. And then if you'll notice what I did is I cut them into sixths. I cut across and then twice at di diagonals and that gives me these little pieces like this that will fit very well on our pizza. Give that a try. I'm gonna dice up those two. All right, next I made some sliced tomatoes and some diced tomatoes. Next I cut up one large bell pepper. Yes, that is just one bell pepper. And what I did is I diced up the ends and I made Julian style peppers with what you see at the top from the main body. Next, we have some sliced white mushrooms. One of my favorite things, sliced fresh jalapenos. And I just wiped my forehead and I can tell you without even sticking one in my mouth that it's hot because now my forehead is burning. All right, I made my own pizza sauce. I just used some tomato sauce that is no oil or sugar. I added some Italian seasoning, garlic powder, and onion powder and stirred it up. That will be the base for my pizza. Next is some baby spinach. And all I did to prepare it was to peel the stem off the bottom of the leaves. All right, so it's been almost an hour. So we're gonna look at our pizza dough and uh, it's rising very well. It looks very good. And so I'm going to punch this down and then uh, put it back down to um, rise a little bit more for about 30 minutes. So that's what I'm going to do next. All right, so the dough is done. It looks really good. And what I'm going to do next is divide these into two balls. And I'm going to take these two balls and roll them out and make them into pizza. So I'll show you what the product looks like. But for now, it's risen and it's ready to go. So I'm gonna make four pizzas out of this dough. Okay, one thing I didn't tell you is that you're supposed to put cornmeal down on your surface, your working surface, so that uh, it becomes a good barrier, keeps it from sticking. You can just start to work that dough. You can work it with your hands. You can use a rolling pin if you like. I'm just gonna make these into uh, a good size pie and uh, I'll show you what that looks like. All right, so I just used my cutting board and worked this out on the cutting board, and now I'm gonna lay it on the pizza pan. All right, here's what it looks like. Lay down on a cookie sheet with parchment paper, and I'm gonna top these two pizzas and get them ready to go. Okay, I'm gonna try to top this pizza doing something I've never done before. I've made lots of pizza dough. I've made lots of pizza. I mean, a lot of pizza but I've never made an Alfredo pizza. So I picked up some Alfredo sauce because with all the other baking and cutting and prepping, I didn't want to make my sauce also. So I picked up this, it's called Victoria Vegan Alfredo sauce. And I looked at the ingredients, I didn't see any oil. Um, so I don't know, it may not be the best in the world, but I'm gonna give it a try. So I'm gonna put this down as the base, the sauce for my pizza. Spread it around with a spoon. Pretty healthy portion here of the sauce. Bring it out to about all three quarters of an inch away from the edge. Okay, now it's time to add the mozzarella cheese. No, nah, I'm just kidding. No cheese. What we're gonna put on here is spinach. So let me grab the spinach. I'm gonna put the uh, spinach down. Going to put some tomato slices. Well, it looks like there's one slice too many, so I guess I'll have to eat that. Okay, I'm gonna put a little bit of the red onion. Now I'm gonna put the ones that are little slices 
And I'm not going to put too much, but I am going to spread it out and give it a little bit of flavor in each bite. I think it's going to flavor this really well. Okay, I'm going to put just a few mushrooms, not very many, just a few, spread them out. A little bit of the julienne pepper. Again, not very much, just, just enough to get some with every bite or two. Okay, and then on this half, I'm gonna put some sliced jalapenos. All right, so here is our pizza. We're gonna give this a try, put it in the oven, I'll check on it, and we'll go from there. Okay, I just brushed the edge of the pizza with some of my marinara sauce. That will help it to get a little color without burning. Uh, and it also give it a little bit of flavor. So I'm gonna put it back in the oven to finish the cooking and I'll show you what the final product looks like. Okay, next I'm gonna make a pizza on my California Home Goods cast iron pizza pan. If you remember from my unboxing video, I was looking for a pizza stone and I came across this and I said, you know what? I'm gonna give it a try and see how it goes. So I rolled out my pizza dough. I spread it out here on my pan. I'm going to poke some holes in it so it doesn't bubble up. And then we're going to begin to top it. Now, you already saw the one with the Alfredo. I'm going to make a similar pizza, but this time, instead of Alfredo, I'm going to use the red sauce. So let's put that on it and get going. I'm going to start with a couple of scoops here, or three. Two, three, that's the same number, right? All right, same thing, I'm gonna add my spinach. Not a lot, but enough that it's uh, covering the pizza. Okay, I'm gonna put the bell peppers down next. A Little bit of mushroom. Some of the red onion slices. On this one, I'm going to add the diced tomato. And I'm gonna make half of it with jalapeno. Okay, there's the pizza, it looks great. Into the 500 degree oven it goes. And we'll see what the final product looks like in just a few moments. Okay, here is the pizza. This is the first one. Now I had to take it off the parchment because the parchment was burned. But it looks really good and I cannot wait to try this. So let's get it cut. All right, let's dish up one piece and we'll give it a try. See what I think. I don't know, I'm a little apprehensive about the Alfredo sauce, but let's see what it tastes like. I'm afraid that tomato is going to pull off in my face. Oh, it's so hot. Hey, that's good. Jalapeno. Mm. This is pretty good. I am going to make my own Alfredo next time, but this is good. Okay, one thing I want to share with you is that I bought a little bit of vegan ranch as well as that Alfredo sauce. And I just wanted to try just a little bit of it with the pizza. So I dipped a little, put it on the plate, and this is really excellent. Now, I don't recommend you eat that every day. It's not something that uh, needs to be a part of your diet if you're trying to lose weight and get healthy. But this is excellent. Okay, same thing as with last time, about halfway through the baking process, I'm gonna brush on some of the uh, marinara sauce, just so the crust doesn't burn as it continues to cook. This is looking really good. I'm really impressed. I can tell this crust is gonna be very crispy. Okay, back in the oven it goes. All right, it's time to open up the uh, final pizza. Well, it's not the final pizza, but it is the last one I'm going to show you for tonight. All right, this is in my California home cooking 14 inch cast iron pizza pan. I'm going to slide this out onto uh, another pan and then I'll cut it into slices for you. All right, there's the final result. It looks great. I'm going to slice this and we're ready to eat. Okay, I'm going to dish up a small slice and uh, have a bite. It is hot in this kitchen. And I'm gonna tell you those fresh jalapenos are hot. But this looks good. I probably should have left it in there another five or six minutes, but the crust, I don't know if you can see that real good. It's brown. It looks good and it smells great. Mmm. 
Listen, if you want to make pizza, look it up on the Plant Pure website. Go to the Artisan Pizza. You'll find that great dough recipe. Then top it however you like it. As you saw, I made an Alfredo pizza with vegetables and I made one with red sauce and vegetables. This is great. We're going to have a great supper tonight and uh, I hope you try it. Let me know what you think. If you'd like to uh, make some comments or suggestions or give me some ideas for pizza, leave the comments below. As always, share it with your friend, hit the like button, subscribe, let other people know. I just want to make a difference uh, in my own health and I hope it helps others as well. Quick update. I didn't mention that uh, I also made a fruit pizza, but I'm not going to show you that tonight because I'm stuffed. I can't eat another bite, but I did make a fruit pizza and uh, it looks real good. It smells fantastic. I, I just wanted to mention to you that if you're interested in that cast iron pizza pan, um, I'm going to put a link to it below so you can go to Amazon and find it, but uh, it worked fantastic. In fact, I think it probably worked better than the parchment paper. The crust on the bottom was good. It was uh, firm, but the, the dough was chewy. Uh, just really, really turned out well. I, I, I have nothing to complain about. It was so good. My name is Denny, and this is my plant-based journey. Have a great evening.